happens first since Joe Girard did it. But again, because he's first team, he now is nominated for a national honor. We'll have to see if he can win that as well. A 3.30 GPA as well as all his great work on the court. Yeah, and, what the, and he has a 3.8 last semester here at LeMoyne. So one thing the Dolphins can uh, boast, if, even if they don't have good seasons on the court, which is not the case this year, they are always fine students in the classroom. And uh, this year's team has an over 3.0 GPA, which is outstanding for any sport team. So even if they can't put the ball in the basket, they know why it didn't go in. Right, exactly. They can, they can come up with all sorts of theories as to why, why not. Dan Cruz is the other senior in the starting front court. He had 15 points in the win at St. Lawrence and is averaging 15 and a half points, seven and a half rebounds a game. Had his career best 27 at Albany the last time these two teams met. Yeah, he shot 9 for 11 in that game and he was named honorable Pally season had a, a little bit of a slump recently, but overall has had an outstanding rookie year. In his first year here on the Heights, he is already third on LeMoyne's all-time block shot list. That's amazing. His defense has really carried this club at key points of the season. Right, he's peaking right now with the number one. Averages just under a, sh a shade under 10 points a game, seven and a half rebounds, three block shots a game. The NECC's leading block shot man, 10th in the nation in squad aways. Robert Team, the starting point guard, had nine points and just four assists in the win at uh, St. Lawrence. He had one of his best games of the season in the first meeting against Albany. We had 16 points and salted the game away with five out of six from the line in the closing minute. Yeah, and Robert Teams will be the key to the postseason for the Dolphins. They need a point guard to take charge and Dodd was key for the playoffs. And Brian Menard, the other starter in the backcourt, really coming on shooting, having a, a very good game at St. Lawrence of nine points and six rebounds. He was a perfect two of two from the floor and uh, also strokes it well against uh, Albany and has 11 points against him this year. And he does it. What side of the Dolphins is brought to you before each and every Lemoyne basketball game by the Eastwood Sports Center, Central New York's most modern bowling center, featuring daily open bowling, bumper bowling, a coffee shop and restaurant, and also a quick draw. New York State Lottery. The College is proud to have the good folks at Eastwood Sports Center of what again is a new sponsor. What I'm proud is uh, Should be a good one here. First round tournament action in the NCC playoffs. We're going to step aside on the court side of the Dolphins program. When we come back, we should be ready for the opening tip and first half action. The morning at the University of Albany. You're listening to the College Basketball on AM 1260. WNBR, Dolphins Country. I just thought of something. Lemoyne comes in at 21 and 5. They are clad in their home white uniforms, trimmed in green and gold. Lemoyne across the chest with green letters. And the Albany Great Danes come in in their road purple, trimmed in white. Albany in gold letters across the chest. The Great Danes match up with a lineup of 6-2, The Dolphins with their 6-1, Our officials, Billy Heckler, Kevin McGough, and David Chambers, they've done several games this year, and they are, every time they take the floor for LeMoyne this year, LeMoyne wins. So maybe that's a good omen if there are omens to be found at this point. Time of year. Take any omen you can. It'll be John Thompson jumping center against Tom Goldrick. We are ready for action here on the Heights. Jump is up and won by uh, the Great Danes. Thompson kicked it right to an Albany player. Into the front court. Brenner has it in the corner, left side. And now Rich Gorman. Hands off to Brenner. Brenner backs into the lane, kicks it back out. On the left side, Duncan down the lane, off balance, hook shot, no good, gets his own rebound, puts it up over Tomzik, misses it again, puts it up again, no good, but a foul. Tomzik did some uh, great work on defense, throwing off two Duncan shots, but give Duncan credit for persisting and getting two offensive boards, and he'll get a chance to go to the line. A good position by uh, Duncan, and that's the problem the Dolphins have. It's six foot six, the Dolphins need another big body to box him out. Duncan on the season, a 67% free throw shooter, 42 of 62. Brian Menard 
called for his first. Shot is up and good, and Albany takes the first lead of the game, 1-0. Duncan has been the thorn in Lemoyne's side this year, even though the Dolphins have won the two meetings this season. Duncan has made them close. Both free throws good, and it's a 2-0 Albany lead. And Lemoyne will see a little bit of press in the backcourt. Ryman R will bring up. So Robert T not controlling the point guard duties as of yet. But the uh, shooting guard, Menard does. Lob from Stockwell into Drews. Drews gets the ball batted out of bounds on the end line. Good defensive play by Tom Goldrick, who might have gotten away with a foul. Yeah, a little bit of a contact there, but Dolphins get the ball back. Stockwell to trigger in underneath. Gets it up top to a team. A team, double team, kicks it to the right side, and Menard. Menard dribbling behind the arc. He gets it back to a team. Up top, and he'll set off. Albany putting a lot of pressure on Rob and team. Brian Menard's going to have to help him out. Lob, Drews to Tomzik. The layup is good. And on the left side of the block. Lemoyne's going to want to go to uh, Tomzik a little more on offense this game because really they haven't looked to get him the ball much in the two meetings against Albany this year. He does have a small height advantage, a couple inches on Rich Dorman underneath. The ball took top of the key, dribbles right of the lane, bounces down low to Brenner. Brenner backs in, spins on the baseline, steps on the line. Tomzik bothered him. Lemoyne gets it on the turnover. We're all even at two. A minute 18 into the game. Chris Benozio and Don Famolo live from the Henninger Athletic Center. And JT forced him too far into the basket where he stepped on that line. So Lemoyne sets up inside half court. Tomzik in the high post. They might look for a backdoor Princeton play. You can still call that a Princeton play. Drews pops for three right side. Off the rim and the rebound to Duncan. A little bit short on the shot. No one there for the rebound. He was wide open. He thought he might as well put it up. Left side, McGoldrick. Janelle down to McGoldrick, baseline, puts it up, no good off the rim, Drews a rebound. The Dolphins look to run, but Albany back on defense. Cross court pass, a team to Stockwell, left side, launches a three, wide left, and the rebound comes out long to Dorman. Stockwell moving on that shot to his left, the shot went left. Here's Darren Janelle, down the lane, hands off to McGoldrick, he has a layup. Dolphins um, move the move defensively that time. Whistle, officials time, ball comes out, bouncing towards center court, and they'll re-inbound. 4-2 Albany. And so far, uh, Stockwell and Drew is missing a couple of open threes, but as you said, Stockwell was moving, really wasn't set to take that three. Now he has it on the left side, Stock. Top of the key, and Drews. Drews guarded well by Janelle. Down low, Tomzik, no look pass, left side, three by Stockwell. Good! Duncan was dragging in the middle there. Had to come up with that rebound. Can't give Stockwell wide open shot. Four Dolphins on the right side. Brenner, baseline shot good. Brenner wide open shots. Dolphins did that time. Lemoyne trails six to five, as we seesaw here in the opening moments. Langro first Dolphin off with the warm ups near center court. He'll come in next time instead. Brian Menar behind the arc on the left. Top of the key, Stockwell drives. Here's Menar penetrating. Shot is no good off glass. And the rebound tipped up and won by McGoldrick. A lot of big bodies in there for Albany. Kept tipping the ball up till they got the rebound. Janelle dribbles around the left perimeter and now up towards center court. Six to five, Albany Great Danes with the early lead. Both teams have played man-to-man -man defense the whole way so far in the game. On the left side, Janelle puts his move on. Hands off to Dormer. He's shot as good at a final. Four of the five Albany players have scored two points, and Dormer can make it three with a free throw as the Dolphins trail eight to five. First foul on Thompson, who went up to block that shot. Didn't see much contact there. Good entry pass by Janelle to find Dormer open under the hoop. Albany is two of two from the line this season, or this game, or uh, this game, right? Shot is missed by Dormer, a 69% free throw shooter. Thompson a rebound. Dolphins trail by three. Thompson on the right side of the arc. Stockwell a three to tie. Long. Rebound comes out. Long to Menard. Menard beats Tomzik. Foul line jumper. Good. Put it in. Silky smooth. Angles in the game for Drews. So Drews taking a very early rest. LeBoy trails by one. Eight to seven. Janelle brings it up on the team. On the right side, Dormer behind the arc. Stockwell a hand in his face. Bounce down low to Brenner. Brenner. Baseline shot. Long. Rebound. Stockwell comes over the top for it. And dribbles up court. Albany back on defense. Lemoyne will have to set up. Cross court pass to Menar. He has to control. Team to the top of the key. Will launch a three pointer. It's in the hole and out. It was all the way down. He came right back up. Dolphins trail by one. Nice screen at the top of the key. Left him wide open. McGoldrick left side. Guarded by Langle. In the corner. 
Now Dormer, bounce down low to Duncan. Duncan, triple team on the baseline. Has to throw out and gets it finally up top to McGoldrick. McGoldrick backs in, lane, off balance shot, no good. Rebound, gets his own, puts it up, is foul. McGoldrick way out of control on that drive, but uh, lucky for him he was not called for a charge and he'll get a chance at the line. Third foul of the game, all on the Dolphins, this one on Langro. Hey Don, do you suffer from the midweek blues? Not since I heard the Syracuse Suns Factory downtown has transformed Wednesday night into college night. Yeah, I heard about that. There's no cover charge and all beer on draft is just $5 a pitcher. Bud Light cans are just a buck and there are double shot well drinks and shooter specials all night long. It all starts at 8 o'clock and remember, no cover charge. Yeah, and if you have to drink to get over hump day, don't go to that old liquor cabinet. Drink good beer. Experience college night at the Syracuse Suns Factory, 210, 216 West Water Street, downtown. They brew their own beer and they've got good food, too. One out of two at the line from a gold trip. Dolphins trail 9 7, and Stockwell had the rebound on the second miss. A team dribbling around the perimeter toward the right now. He's double team. Bounce down low to Thompson. Thompson back to the basket. Hook shot. Good. Right in the groove. He's three for three from the floor, has six points. Dolphins tie it up at nine. And Stockwell and Drew's the top two scorers on Amoy have a combined three points. So Dolphins getting the scoring from unlikely sources so far. And Landro gets a steal and tips a pass away from McGoldrick down low. Left side, Stockwell. Hesitation dribble, loses the ball on the end line, and it'll be Albany possession. And it's too bad because he just faked Rich Dormer out so bad, I think Dormer's shooting is still in the basket. Substitution, Van Drew's back into the game after a brief breather, and he replaces Menard. So the substitution pattern by head coach Scott Hicks is a little bit uh, different. Ingerman's in the game as well as Tomzik takes a seat. So Drew's, who normally takes the second rest, takes the first one tomorrow. Brenner hops in the lane, shot short, rebound, offensive foul on Albany. It might be Duncan's first. It's the first on Albany today. And he's on Duncan going over the back. Kevin McGough with a call. And a substitution, the first of the game for Albany. Coming into the game is Charles Paul, a 6'9 sophomore to Perriman, one of the best block shot men in the in this NECC. And uh, he doesn't have a bad shot either. No, he replaces Ryan Brenner. Doesn't get a lot of looks down low. The ball doesn't go to him that much. A very balanced scoring on the Albany team, but defensively a force inside at 6'9. Lemoyne can take its second lead of the game. They left 5-4. We're all even at 9. 14-16 to go. Langro whoops a pass down low to Drews. He's fouled on the drive to the basket. Paul will be called for his first foul. I think that's the only reason why Charles Paul, a very good athletic player, doesn't start. And that's because he's very foul prone. In a game Lemoyne played at Albany, he picked up three quick ones in, the, in about a span of five minutes. Yeah, and uh, Dan Drews, the senior, going to town against the sophomore Charles Paul. Great pass inside by Langro right straight down the center of the paint to Drews under the basket. Dan Drews has uh, not scored in the game. He's looking for his first point. Hits the first free throw. He's 30 of his last 35 from the line. He's doing a great job from the line and really peaking here in the second half of his senior year. Dolphins really picking it up at the line, at least the starters. Second shot good. Dan Drews first two points in the game. And the morning has its biggest lead, 11-9. 14-13 to go first half. The morning does uh, not really press the backcourt. Although a team showing some pressure. Dolphins now trap as they Albany gets it across midcourt. Bounce down low to Paul. Paul loses the ball. Drews is there to cradle the uh, steal. And it's re-stolen at midcourt by Duncan. Here's Janelle racing down the left side of the court. Throws a pass out of bounds, but before that he's called for an offensive foul as his momentum carried him right into Langro. Knocked him down on his butt. Good call by the official there. Now both teams with three fouls apiece. Janelle out of control on that break. There's a spot where Janelle doesn't look like a point guard, doesn't look like he likes to run the break that well when there's any defense around him at all. The team works it up, Albany in a 2-3 zone, as they have featured all year against the Dolphins. Drews to the top of the key in Stockwell. Stockwell really not getting open for many shots. And this big team in there right now, Albany content to go zone. Drews, foul line jumper, long, rebound, tipped up by Langro controls, puts it up, misses it, rebound, back to Ingram, and he dribbles out. team will set up with 26 on the shot clock. The offensive work by the Dolphins, they had Drews open in the paint, just couldn't hit the shot. Ingram on the left side, behind the arc. Now back to Stockwell, still top of the key. Now puts the penetration, left to the arc, shoots, no good. Rebound Paul with one hand. Langford getting pushed around, complaining to the officials, but he's doing some pushing himself. Janelle, off balance shot, good, as he threw it up in the middle of the lane with one hand. Uh, prevented a steal by Robert Team and spun the ball in his hand. 
up. Nice snap shot, Benji. We're tied at 11. All five Albany score players have scored in the game. Stockwell gets his pass tipped away, drives baseline, puts the reverse up and in. Stock with five points. And the Moyne has a two-point lead again, 13-11. And Tomzik to the scorer's table. He'll be in next whistle. Probably for uh, Langwood, who's done a good job underneath, boxing out. Janelle to Duncan, left side behind the arc. Top of the key, McGoldrick. He has a good touch from out there. Now moves in, back to the basket on Langwell. Kicks it back out to Dormer. Dormer bounces down low once again to McGoldrick. Spins on Langwell, has no outlet on the baseline. He's choked off, and he's called for traveling. He completely occluded uh, McGoldrick from the basket. He had nowhere to turn for a shot and no one to pass to as the Dolphins clamp down on defense. And Langrill's game has gotten better and better every game on the heights, but his defense recently has become outstanding. Eight minutes into the game, Dolphins by Drew. Drews takes a three in the corner, and now they reverse it to the left side, and in a team behind the arc. Albany team. back in a man-to-man to take away that three-point shot. Yep. Drews left side behind the arc to a team. A team has to penetrate. Kicks it out to Stockwell. 17-footer, right side, good. the dribble, he's moving a lot on the perimeter and putting up some nice shots. This is Stock's best game against Albany this year already. He has seven points. He has struggled against this club this year. Lemoyne up four. It's their biggest lead. 15-11. Right side. Janelle with it. To his backcourt teammate in Dormer. Dormer double team. Hands down low to McGoldrick. He misses the layup but it's, it's swatted in by Paul. They're going to wave it off. Offensive <laughs> Offensive goal tend. It's a great play because the ball was almost in the cylinder anyway when Paul went up and pushed it through. Well, Albany was practicing its dunks in the pregame before the officials came on the floor. And I think they're a little too dunk happy. They should have uh, pulled that rebound down and then gone up for a shot. Stockwell works left side. Entry pass to Tomzik. Back out to a team. A team right side. Flips it out to Ingram. Ingram fakes the three. Drives and is foul on his drive. And before the shot is up, he will get uh, the foul called. It's the fourth on Albany already. Pete Moyer is in for the Dolphins, backup point guard, sophomore out of Constantia. He replaces a team who get his first rest of the night. Tom, speaking of first, Tom McGoldrick with his first foul of the night. Stockwell to trigger in underneath his own hoop, whips it into Tomzik at the foul line, and now back up top to Moyer, who's set up. 15-11 Lemoyne, approaching the midway mark of the first half. Stockwell, top of the key, launches a long three, pulls up! season here at the Hanover Athletic Center goes nuts. And they're holding up on their trees. At Albany, 10.39 to go first half. Lemoyne 18. And Albany 11. It's a 20-second timeout. We'll keep it here. It looks like it's the Lemoyne's had against Albany in all three games combined. I don't think they've led by as many as uh, seven. I, I can't remember because when they beat Albany at home by six, I think that was the biggest, was the biggest lead, the lead they had. And they never had a seven-point lead at Albany. The game at Albany was, was a bizarre one in that neither team had more than a five-point lead the entire game. Albany to inbounds, and they have a new player into the game that we haven't seen all year. It's a junior point guard, 5'9", from Queens, New York. Dwayne Luke did not play in the first two meetings. Dan Neary is the normal backup point guard. Boy, he's small. I don't think he's even 5'9". He looks like a uh, high school player on the floor. Down low, Paul has a shot, misses it, long, but the rebound is tipped up and in, it looked like by Tomzik. I don't know who they're going to give the credit to, it might be, uh, we'll have to find out who gets credit for that last basket. Moyer brings it up, Dolphins by 5, 18, 13, first half. Menard behind the arc to Ingram, left side, he's open, he'll take a three-pointer, it's wide left. And Ingram misses it. Chris Paul with credit for the last basket. So Charles Paul gives all his first points off the bench, and then Janelle hits a three-pointer. It's a two-pointer. The official has told his all the way. It's a great call, a great help by the official. So all of a sudden, uh, Albany's cut it back to a three-point lead. 18 to 15, Dolphins see some pressure, and they break it. Ingram down the far sideline, drives, hands off to Tomsic. He's alone, misses the shot, but it's over for steps. 
it looked a little bit awkward. Not sure if it was steps or you're allowed a step and a half to the basket. Yeah, he was going straight to the basket. That's a bad call by the officials. Um, unless the call's not on Thompson. It's on, uh, it Lump might be Ingram. on Ingram, who was driving close to before the pass off. Yeah, that's very possible. And then got the pass off too late as the defense collapsed, and Ingram had to face Paul under the basket. Some substitutions. It's a team Menard in the backcourt. Stockwell, Langro, and Thompson up front. Wayne Luke brings it up. On the left side, here's a baseline jumper by Duncan. He misses it. Tomzik wrestles the rebound away. Good position by Tomzik right under the bench. A team brings it up. A team looks to Stockwell. Stockwell open three again. Good! And he's not even hitting iron lately. 13 for Stockwell. And the moment he's up six. They're giving him two. He was behind that line. He had a lot of time to set up. Yeah, it looked like it, maybe it's a makeup ball, but it shouldn't be. Yeah, he was definitely behind the line. But nonetheless, Lemoyne's up five, 20 to 15. Stockwell has 12 points. Right corner, Duncan, double team, dribbles out of it to the lane. Shot is blocked by Thompson, and Langro gets the rebound. A team brings it up court, hands off to Menard. Menard, lefty layup good. Menar with his first two, Dolphins by seven, and matches their biggest goals, 22-15. Warmer down the lane, quadruple teamed, and Stockwell takes it right out of his hand. Stockwell brings it up with a four on two for the Dolphins. No look pass to Menar, another lefty layup, good! And now the Dolphins are starting to pull away, up nine, 24-15. Excitement as they head back to the bench, jumping up and high climbing each other. 8.37 to go, timeout on the floor by Albany, it's a 20. We'll keep it right here. National Fire Adjustment Company Incorporated is licensed by New York State to represent policyholders in insurance recoveries. Call Dennis at 437-7400. Tell him you heard about NFA right here on the Lemoyne Basketball Broadcast. That's National Fire Adjustment Company Incorporated, 437-7400, assuring you a better recovery. Fans, if Lemoyne wins this game, we have to alert you, in case you don't know yet, that we will be on WMCR in Oneida, 106.3. It covers Central New York very well. Wherever you are in Central New York, you should be able to pick up WMCR. They will cover all of LeMoyne's uh, postseason action, starting with Friday's game, if LeMoyne should win tonight against Albany. Dolphins with only two turnovers in the game so far. They forced five on Albany. Wayne Luke has it on the right side. He's a diminutive point guard. They reverse it to the left perimeter and Dormer. Dormer adds up to Brenner. He has a foul line jumper. That's good. Brenner has four points. Dolphin lead is seven, 24-17. And the team brings it across half court. Still the 2-3 zone by uh, Albany. Left side, Benar pointing to a teammate. Now Stockwell up top. Gave up the dribble. Jump pass. Langro on the left side. Dribbles. Shot is blocked from behind by Dormer. Uh, maybe some contact there by Goldrick on the baseline. But... Dormer whips a pass down low. And Brenner for a reverse layup. Six for Brenner, and the Dolphins' lead is down to five again. 24-19 as uh, someone missed an assignment on defense. Very well-run offense by Albany. They are a very well-coached team by Doc Sowers. Tom Sick on the foul line, gets it out to Stockwell. He'll have another good look at a three. Bullseye! That one they give him 15 points for Stockwell. He's hit five straight jump shots. 27-19, Lamar. Adam Stockwell's in the zone. The Dolphins are going to want the ball in his hand offensively every time down as long as he's shooting this way. Best game he's had against Albany this year in three tries. McGoldrick back into the game, working on Langro. Brenner at the foul line, fakes the jumper. Wayne Luke on the left side. Back to Dormer. Dormer behind the foul line, shoots and scores. And Dormer has two buckets and four points. It's a six-point lead. And just when Lemoyne looks like it's going to put a run together to blow away uh, Albany, here come the Great Danes right back, fighting hard. I don't think this game can be a blowout as long as Doc Sowers is coaching. Depending on if Albany, if Albany continues to shoot as well as they have. This, this will be a game. And Albany shot well in the first game they played here as well, keeping the game close all game to the end. Inside of seven minutes, first half, Lemoyne by six, 27-21. Right side, Tomzik. Cross court pass to a team. Back up top to Stockwell. He's open again. Jumper along. Drews tips it up, but short. And it comes out to Luke. Drews rushed the tip, anticipating the defense from behind, but he had no one in front of him. Still looking for his first basket. Duncan throws a three up. Wild off the glass. Dormer the rebound. Hands off to Duncan. Streaking down the glass. He misses the layup long. 
The rebound putback is good by Brad Dixon into the game. The offense have to do a better job boxing out going for those rebounds. Yeah, they're doing a bad job on the defensive glass. Drews, top of the key, fakes the three. Hands off to the left side at Menard. Menard throws a pass out of bounds, well over uh, Drews' head. And now head coach Scott Hicks wants timeout with 6.16 to go in the game. Albany has the ball. Lemoyne only a four-point lead. 27-23 is another 20. Year after year, Lemoyne College is nationally recognized for its academic quality and affordable cost. Lemoyne Center for Continuous Learning knows adult students have jobs, families, and other commitments, and that's why Lemoyne College offers courses to fit your schedule and a trained staff to sit down with you and talk about your academic, career, and professional needs. Call Lemoyne College's Center for Continuous Learning at 445-4141. Register at Lemoyne because education never ends. Take time to learn part time. Again, the number for registration at Lemoyne, 445-4141. Now, Ingram will replace Brian Menard, who threw that pass off the uh, all to our left. Let's set it up for you. It's Tomsic, Stockwell, Drews, Ingram, and a team for Lemoyne. It's Duncan, Dormer, Luke, Dixon, and Brenner for Albany. And Dwayne Luke, inside a half court, dribbles. Dolphins in a 2-3 zone. Left side, Dormer, hands off to Brenner down the lane. He has a shot off glass. It's good. Dolphins over playing on that zone to take away three-point shooting, but not enough defense underneath. And now it's a two-point game. Dolphins with some pressure, get it across half court. 27-25, Lemoyne, 541 to go in the first half. And Albany has uh, stuck with Lemoyne after the Dolphins have uh, hit some wide open threes to take a couple of sizable leads. Right side Ingram pops for long range. Off the rim, Drews the rebound. Fakes, puts up the shot and scores the layup. That's his first basket for the game. And then you can say Fakes, Fakes again, and then puts it in, waiting for the defense to go by. Great play by the senior. Outstanding offensive rebound. Four points for Drews, that was his first hoop. Lemoyne by four, three by Dormer, good! And now it's a one point game, seven points for Dormer, and Albany is shooting a lights out, 29 to 28 Lemoyne. That's why the Dolphins want to play good perimeter defense to take away that three point shooting, and they've also got to do it under the basket. Albany matches up so well with Lemoyne, this Albany team has really had trouble on the road in the NECC this year, not winning at any decent gym. Stockwell off balance shot call for steps before he can put the off awkward drive on. It's a, it's a move that Stockwell does a lot of the game. It's kind of a top step where he brings the ball up high over his shoulder, but that time he got his hand underneath the ball and was called for the travel. Eight to two run for Albany. They've cut Lemoyne's lead down to one and can take a lead now. Tom's of course takes a rest and Lango comes back in and uh, the Dolphins, Scott Hicks just keeps rotating all in and out. Janelle works it up on a team. To the left side, Dormer fakes the three. Left of the lane, and off to Brenner. He misses the layup. The rebound tipped up to Ingram. Ingram is fouled, no call. And the ball skips out of bounds off of Ingram. And head coach Scott Hicks is pleading with the official, David Chambers, saying Ingram was hacked six times, and he loses the ball, and they call it off Lemoyne. Yeah, and, and it's especially Will Smith who's doing a lot of pushing and bumping under the basket. That being Andre Duncan, the Will Smith lookalike. Dormer has it. Left side of Dixon. Now Duncan behind the arc, and Ingram giving him all sorts of pressure. Dormer working around the right perimeter, looking for another inside entry pass. Pass is thrown away by Albany. Langer was pushed down, but uh, did not draw a foul. And it will be Lemoyne possession with 4.04 to go in the half up one. But Langer did his job because he wouldn't let Dixon get to the ball. 29-28 Dolphins, and Ingram faces pressure in the back court. He hands off to a team, and a team will bring it up with no pressure. Mateen whips it to the right side and Stockwell. Stockwell down low to Langro. Langro drives, is fouled, and will get foul shots. Lemoyne's first foul shot since Dan Bruce hit a pair early in the half. Fans, if the snow and cold is just too much for you to take, Travel Agents International and Northwest World Vacations have Florida getaway packages that'll definitely warm you up. Florida packages start at $263 a person, including airfare and seven-day car rental. And that's amazing, a seven-day car rental along with airfare for $263 a person. Get away today, call Travel Agents International for all the toasty details. You can reach them at 622-2040. Offices conveniently located in DeWitt, Fairmount, and Liverpool. That's Travel Agents International at 622-2040. First shot is good by Langrell, a 71% free throw shooter, and he hits the second one as well. Lemoyne, four of four from the line. Those are Langrell's first two points. Dolphins' first two bench points. Lemoyne up three, 31-28 with 3.47 to go first half. 
Janelle directs traffic inside a half court. Mateen shadowing him. Still dribbling at half court. Shot clock to 21. Now finds Dormer. Left perimeter. Dixon holds overhead in the corner. Brenner on the left side. Now to Dixon again. Langle all over him. Shot clock to 10. And he dribbles it off his foot. Dixon does. Picked up by a team. Three on two Dolphins. Bounce pass to Langle. He loses it. He can't control and it will be Albany ball. And the pass was a little bit flat from Robert Teen and Langle couldn't get low enough to pick it up. One of the dead spots on the floor. Tom Goldrick is back in replacing Dixon who had the turnover just seconds ago. And this time uh, Janelle will bring it up. 3.15 to go first half. Lemoyne leads by three. It's been a great game here from the Hennigar Athletic Center. On the right side, Dormer. Stockwell a hand in front of him. Lob down low directly to Ingram, who intercepts. Ingram doing a great job underneath on Duncan. And Duncan tried to swarm him and foul him, and uh, no call. Ingram finds Langwell on the far sideline, and he's pestered by McGoldrick. Albany giving credit, not giving anything easy to the Dolphins in the last few moments coming back in this game after Stockwell was open for about five easy jump shots. Well, easy for him. I couldn't hit from way out there. Stockwell on the right perimeter. Bounces down low to Drews. Drews back to the basket. Spins. Hook shot. Good! High hockey hook shot by Drews. Six points for Danny Drews, the senior out of Palmyra. Lemoyne up five. 33-28. 2.20 to go first half. Lemoyne wants to end the half with a flurry. McGoldrick, top of the key. He finds uh, Janelle. The shot is up and rolls in from two-point range. Janelle got the bounce that time. He got several bounces. Six points for Janelle, and Lemoyne's lead is back to three. Two minutes to go first half. 33-30. Great game here from the Hennigar Athletic Center. And both teams slowing down the offense. Stockwell, pull up three. Long up the back of And uh, Stockwell landed a foul on Duncan, no foul. Two. And now we have a, a foul on Lemoyne as Janelle brought it up. And now the fans are saying, hey, call it on both of them. Uh, Robertine and uh, interfering with the fast break. Good call that time. Robertine called for his first. It's not a shooting foul. Fourth on Lemoyne, five on Albany with 1.48 to go in the first half. It's been a well-played first half. Fresh 35 on the shot clock. Albany has to inbound. They're having trouble with the inbounds. It's thrown up and... Uh, Duncan, foul line jumper. Good, and it's a one-point game again. Duncan's first field goal has four points. 33-32 Dolphins. Ingram to Langer. Lobs it down low to Drews. He has a step. He puts the shot up and runs off the rim of the foul. He was just hanging up there on the rim for the longest time. And Drew is right into the basket, staring at the ball when it finally rolled off the back of the rim. He looked up into the sky and just heaved aside. Every Lemoyne slam dunk this year is a Slices slam. Slices Pizza features a fabulous variety of hot, delicious, mouth-watering pizzas located at 311 West Fayette Street in the heart of Armory Square. You can stop by for a relaxing, affordable lunch or dinner or for just a slice with your friends. Slices is open late till midnight weekdays and 3 a.m. Friday and Saturday nights or Saturday and Sunday mornings, as the case may be. Drew's can the first free throw. He's three of three from the line. Not just a pizza shop, Slices is part of the downtown Syracuse experience, so enjoy a slice of life at Slices Pizza, a meal for your money, Armory Square, downtown. Second shot by Drew's. Up and good. Eight for Dan Drew's, and Lemoyne's lead back up to three, 35-32. Give Albany credit, though. They're not becoming intimidated. They're sticking with the green and gold. It was the second foul on Ryan Brenner who takes a seat in the back of center. Charles Paul is in, probably to end the half. And Paul receives the pass on the right side behind the arc. Top of the key, launching a three to tie is McGoldrick. He misses it. Stockwell wrestles the rebound away from the bigger Paul, but throws it right to Duncan. Duncan in the lane, puts up a shot and scores. Duncan was way too far that close to the basket for Stockwell to do anything about it. Lemoyne by one, 35-34, and that is a rare mental mistake by Stockwell. A team to Stockwell on the right side, and Langrell in the corner, bottled up. Ingram to the left side, and a team feeds Drew. The shot is good from five. Ten points for Drews and a team with a pretty assist. Lemoyne up three. We're under 45 seconds in the first half. On the right side, McGoldrick. Langrell in front of him. Janelle working on a team behind the up. Now draws a double team. Here's McGoldrick driving the lane. He has called for a charge. And that's the first one on Albany. He was out of control once again. It's the second time. Here's a okay. now called for one earlier. But now two fouls on the big man, McGoldrick and Brown. And the Dolphins not in any serious foul trouble. And that's the one and one now. 17-32. 
seventh foul on Albany, so it should be a foul shot. Except it's, Except it's a player control foul, so Langro will inbound. 31 seconds to go, shot clock is off. Lemoyne's up three and should have a lead into the, going into the locker room. Zane just walks it up and now bends at the waist and dribbles with his feet planted firmly on the uh, dolphin, painted on center court. 17 seconds to go now. Lemoyne by three. Now finds uh, Stockwell on the bounce. Stockwell on the team play catch. Nine seconds to go. Stockwell still behind the arc. Lob down low to Drews, but it's read well and stolen by Dixon. Dixon stolen by Stockwell, but he stepped on the line with three seconds left. So now all of a sudden, quick substitution says Moyer, Tom Zick, and Menard check in for Lemoyne, along with Drews and Langrill. Three seconds to go, and Albany will have a chance to tie with a long bomb. Dolphins, if they've had one problem in this first half, they've had a lot of turnovers. They can't get the inbounds, and now Janelle throws it. It's tipped away by Menard. Dormer in the corner. Long three up. Short. It won't count. It won't count because it was tipped up after the shot was missed. It was tipped up. They're going to count the basket on the tip up. That's a bad call. Head coach Scott, no, they're going to wait Head coach Scott Hicks caught that call. He went immediately into the face of Billy Hebner, the lead official, and says, just when they were about to give the signal for yes, count in the basket, Hicks was jumping up and down saying, you can't do it. Because Ken called it off nicely. The buzzer went off before the ball was tipped. The yep. was stop, would have counted. It's a good call. The tip wouldn't have counted, but the three had it gone, would have. And uh, now, really upset is Doc Sowers as he storms off the court. Lemoyne has a three-point lead at the break. 37-34 for Albany. Duncan, McGoldrick, Brenner, Dormer, and Janelle in the road purple trimmed in white. Albany across the chest. Dolphins have Stockwell, Drews, Thompson, Katina, and Menard in the home white trimmed in forest green and old gold. Lemoyne across the chest. Stockwell left corner to a team. Thompson spins, hook shot, no good, and the rebound to McGoldrick. Not a good look at the hook shot. Nobody there for the rebound. No, nobody put uh, a bunch of purple shirts. Just underway, second half, and the Dolphins lead by three. Left side, Duncan, pull up jumper, it's good. He's got the touch all of a sudden. He's hit three straight hoops, has eight points, and we have a one point lead for Lamar. Albany continues to shoot well in this gym. Menard to Stockwell, top of the key. Used a screen by Drews and bounced down low to Thompson. He's bumped from behind. That'll be a foul on Albany. It'll be the third on Ryan Brenner. Wow, the starting center. Just what he didn't want to do is pick one up right away in the second half. First of the second half for either side. And Stockwell will trigger in with a fresh 35 in front of the shag carpet to our right. Lobs it ahead to uh, Tomzik. Tomzik bounced down low to Stockwell on the give and go. Has a layup. Put in the inbounds pass. Playing the two-man passing game with Tom Zick. Lemoyne up three again, 39-36. By the way, Stockwell with 17 points. Game high total. McGoldrick to Dormer on the right side. Actually, it's Brenner. Now back to Dormer. Stockwell in front of him. Passing around the perimeter. Janelle in the right corner. Shakes, moves on a team. Shot is up around the rim and off. Rebound. Tapped from Brenner to a team on the baseline. Brenner may be a little bit timid because of the three fouls. A team finds Drew streaking down the lane. Has a layup. Great pass from half court by Robertson. And defense did not get back quickly enough. 12 points for Dan Drews. Lemoyne up 5, 41, 36. Right side, McGoldrick in the corner. Gets it back out to Duncan. And Menard doing a good job on him. Dormer pass to the right side of McGoldrick. McGoldrick still behind the perimeter. Drew swarming on him. Dormer lobs it down low to Duncan. He has a step and a layup. Stay with, uh, with Duncan when he's that close underneath the basket for an easy two. Tomzik's got to help out. Ten for Duncan to lead Albany. Stockwell wide open on the left side for three. Doesn't take it. Entry pass to Drews. The hook shot long off the back iron and a foul over the back on Tomzik. Duncan just can't pull away today. It was a good look by Drews. He had the shot in the lane that he wanted, but just drew back iron on it. Came out long and... Uh, I can't see who had the rebound for Albany, but Tomzik has called for his second foul, the starting center for Lemoyne. Brenner with, with the rebound, and now he takes a seat on the bench. He survived the three fouls, putting in another couple of minutes. Just over two minutes into the second half, Lemoyne 41, Albany 38. Now Charles Potter in the game. Drews tips a pass away near midcourt, but uh, retrieving it is McGoldrick. McGoldrick spins in the lane. The shot is good and a foul. That was a prayer from his hip pocket. Uh, 
times in that case. McGoldrick has one move every time. He fakes outside the baseline and then turns in to put in a runner. And if Dan Drews can keep his feet in the lane, it'll be another charge on McGoldrick. Instead, it's a foul on Drews. Chance for a three-point play to tie the game for McGoldrick. McGoldrick, a 72% free throw shooter, one of two from the line today. And now the fans are uh, getting on. McGoldrick. Shot is up, and good. And we're tied at 41. Six points for Tom McGoldrick, the transfer from St. Rose. And Dan Drews gets it to a team, faces some pressure in the backcourt, brings it up. Looks for a cutter, and Menar on the far sideline. Back to a team. Lob to Tomsic. Tomsic passes out to Drews. Right corner, three pointer, long. Rebound tipped up. Menar fights for it. It comes out to Stockwell. Stockwell whips the pass to the left side of Menar. A tee and open for three, top of the key. It's short. Rebound tipped by Drews. No good. And the rebound comes to McGoldrick. Dolphins had several chances there. Couldn't convert. Drews looked a little bit tired on that tip. Couldn't get up off the ground. Lob down low to Paul. Paul spins in the lane. Shot is good. And it's so now a two point lead for Albany. Albany continuing to sizzle the net. Four points for Charles Paul, who's a, uh, quite a good singer in the offseason, or when he's not playing. He's part of a five-man, I believe, harmony unit. Lob down low to Drews. Drews steps on the line, can't control the pass, took his eye off it. It will be Albany Ball. A good call by Larry Lake, Paul on the baseline. Fans didn't like it because the call came so late. And Chris, you say, Paul, the singer, man, so it's not Will Smith. It's Paul with the smooth singing voice. Right. Will Smith, of course, the Fresh Prince, and DJ Jazzy Jeff from the Fresh Prince, an 80s rap duo. Albany faces some pressure, but solves it. Janelle, lob down low to Paul. Paul on Stockwell, shot up, off glass, and good. Uh, it's too much for Stockwell to guard on the knee. Dolphins are going to have to do something differently defensively. Six points for Paul. Dolphins are down four now. It's their biggest deficit. Stockwell on the left side. Moist just not capitalizing. Down the lane. Drews has a feed. Stockwell has a layup. 14 for the senior, Lemoyne down to 45-43. Janelle brings it up on a team, spins away from him. Foul line and is hacked by a team. Good call. And we heard the slap up here, so it must be a good call. 16-03 to play, second half. Dolphins in a dog fight, down two. Non-shooting foul. It's the third on Lemoyne in the first half, second on a team. Foul trouble. Ryan Brenner with three. Nobody else with more than two in the game. Janelle, the trigger in from underneath his own hoop, gets it up top to Paul. And here's a wild three off the mark by Janelle. Rebound Stockwell. That was an ill-advised shot. Foul line jumper, Routine. And rolls off the back rim and we're tied. Routine finally getting into the score column. We're tied at 45, 15-45 to go second half. Janelle brings it up. That's a nice five-point swing for the morning. The missed three by Janelle and the made two by a team. Thorner behind the arc, guided by Menard. Dolphins in the 2-3 zone, but giving little room. Janelle lobs it down low to Paul. Paul gobbles it on the end line, steps on the end line, or dribbles on it, and turns it over. Lamont gets it back. Paul did in pretty good position originally, but couldn't handle the pass. And when he went outside, he dribbled on the baseline. So Lemoyne has a chance to regain the lead, a 4-0 run to draw even again. Menard on the left side, hasn't looked to shoot much. Stockwell to Menard, three-point jumper. Off glass, no good long. Menard was taken down hard. He wanted a foul call, no such luck. And Scott Hicks lobbying for the foul, but doesn't get the call. McGoldrick fakes the three, drives the lane. Big roll off the fingertips of the team, and out of bounds, it will be Albany possession with 26 on the shot clock. And I think McGoldrick got over the charge that time. Didn't have a good shot the lane. It should be the Dolphins politician on the back. That's right, Steve Evans, a councilman in the city of Rome. Of course, that's his side job. His number one job is assistant coach with Lamont. Inbounds to Dormer at the top of the key. Dormer trying to work against the 2-3 Dolphin zone. Dolphins haven't shown zone much today, but they've shown the trap in the zone once in a while. The Goldrick pass to the near sideline and Janelle. Janelle to the left side and Duncan. Duncan looking to isolate Paul down low. Instead, he'll take the jumper on a screen by Paul and hits it. And Duncan has 12 points. Dolphins down to 47-45. A team racing into the front court. Finds Drews, top of the key. Three for the lead. Bullseye! Another assist for Robbie, a team. 17 for Drews. Lemoyne's up one, 48-47. A 
a 7-2 run is giving them the lead back. Janelle to the right side, and Dormer lobs a pass out of bounds. Intended down low for McGoldrick, but couldn't find him on the entry. It might have been held, actually, down low, but uh, either way, LeMoyne gets the ball up one. 14-17 to go in the uh, second half. There's going to be a 20-second timeout by Albany. As LeMoyne leads by one with possession. Some Dolphin fans drink like a fish. Others simply like to snack and tied them over, whichever the kid, 1962. 210, 216, West Water Street, downtown. Don, I know we've been there several times. We're gonna be at the Syracuse Lunch Factory again this week. I'll be there Thursday. Uh, someone at work put the, uh, the Keen name in. Keen, another one of the Dolphin sponsors. And uh, Keen won a party package there. So that's something else you can do with the Lunch Factory. You can uh, enter your name for a drawing and win a party package for you work. Dolphins into the front court. Langrell and Ingram check back into the lineup, along with a team. Stockwell and Drews. A team plays give and go with Drews. Drews spins in the lane. His shot is blocked off black by Paul. His first for the game. Janelle brings it up. A pass can't be controlled by McGoldrick. Fans wanted to travel. He puts the layup up, missed it, partially blocked. Gets his own rebound in the corner. Spins out down the lane. Shot is up over his head. No good rebound. A team control. Smallest man on the floor has the rebound. He races ahead. Now stops at the top of the key. Stockwell. And a foul call on Albany. Could that be number three on Dormer? Uh, that's just the first on Dormer. That would have been the third on McGoldrick. Dormer that time pushing Ingram out of the way. That's second foul on Albany, three on Lemoyne here with 13.42 to go second half. Lemoyne by one. He's trying to get to uh, Stockwell, but no such luck that time. Good screen set by Ingram. Stockwell. They've cut off his shots here in the second half. Lob down low, but it's picked up by Paul. Ill-advised pass by a team. Threw it too high behind the reach of Langwell, who he wanted to get. A steal by a team. He picks the pocket of Janelle. Three down two for Lemoyne. Pull up jumper for the foul line. Good! Robbie a team, the junior from New Jersey, having a great stretch here in the second half. Four points and a series of assists here in the second half. Lemoyne up three again. Obviously, made his first field goal attempt here in the second half. And Lemoyne still has the lead by three, though they gave up the lead momentarily. 50 to 47 Dolphins, seven minutes into the second half. Here's a scoop shot, no good off the mark by Janelle. Rebound on the floor, Stockwell controls, and now Albany going a little bit out of their offense, taking some wild shots. Cross court pass from a team to Ingram, back out to Stockwell, top of the key. A team feeds Drews at the foul line, puts it on the floor, and is called for a travel. Yes, good job. Called for about six travels here today. He's been a little bit out of sync. They're not quite the machine that we saw at St. Lawrence where everything was clicking in the second half, but they're doing the job, obviously shooting so well in this half, but now the Dolphin defense starting to take its toll. 12.45 to go in the second half. Lemoyne leads 50 to 47. They're on a 9 to 2 run. And Dwayne Luke back in the game to run things for Albany. The tiny little point guard from Queens. Pass down low to Duncan. His shot is partially blocked, but jammed home by Charles Paul. And he high steps it back down court. He was in the right place at the right time. No one put a body on him. Eight points for Paul. It's a one-point Lemoyne lead. Stockwell on the right side. Turnaround jumper off the rim. No good. And the rebound comes out to McGoldrick. Dolphins now falling apart in this stretch. Dormer fakes the three on the right side. Hands off to McGoldrick. Down the lane. He gets it to Paul. Paul hands off to Duncan down the lane. The shot off glass and good. We'll do a better job defensively, and that's what's got hit. Timeout, 14 for Duncan, and the Dolphins give up the lead again, 51-50. The longer this game stays close, the more Albany's going to have the feeling that they can win it. Fans, as our hometown team takes this time to discuss strategy, let's tell you about another hometown team, Egan Real Estate, a longtime supporter of Lemoyne College. Egan is the oldest full-service real estate company in Syracuse, not a franchise, but locally owned and operated, and that's a rarity these days. Egan features worldwide relocation services and has locations across the area through which to serve you. Syracuse, Manlius, Liverpool, Central Square, and here in DeWitt. Call Francis Carroll at 474-7411 and see for yourself why, like the Dolphins, Egan Real Estate truly is your hometown team. That's 474-7411. Is that a full timeout now? This is twice. They've called a 20 and gone to a full timeout. It looks like uh, head coach Scott Hicks may have changed it to a full timeout late. Uh. Yeah, I know a process of break. We're but, trying to get our sponsors happy here. But uh, I think the Dolphins needed a full time out at that point. The Tom Wilson strategy really changed the momentum in the second half. They seemed to lose it in that little stretch uh, where they 
just weren't that crisp offensively and weren't getting back quickly enough defensively. Albany doing a good job posting up Andre Duncan down low against some of the smaller Lemoyne defenders. He's had some easy shots under the basket. It's Luke, Duncan, Paul, McGoldrick, and the end of the game is Dormer for Albany. For Lemoyne, it's a team and Ingram in the backcourt. Langroll, Tomzik, and Stockwell up front. Drews takes a rest. Tomzik bounces to the right side and a team. The team works around a pick by Tomzik. Has no open shot. Stockwell to a team is pressured. Dolphins down one. Langrell down the lane. Has a layup off the glass. Yes, he has four points for him off the bench. Lemoyne's only bench points. 52-51 Dolphins. McGoldrick drives right of the lane. Gets away with a step. No call, no good on the shot. Tomzik wrestles the rebound away. It is fouled over the back. Third foul on Tom McGoldrick. So now Albany with 11-19 left to go. And McGoldrick and Ryan Brunner, their two best front court players, in foul trouble. The 6'6 sophomore out of Carpenter's Falls makes an appearance. He'll play for a stretch here in the middle of the second half as McGoldrick sits down along with Brenner. So now with the second unit on the floor for Albany, the Dolphins should be able to make a run. 11-17 to go in that second half. Dolphins by one. Tomzik in the high post, looking for someone to pass to. Gets to Ingram on the far sideline. Langrill behind the arc. Stockwell time of the key. Hasn't looked to shoot much in the second half. Ingram trying to get it down low to Langrill. Ingram fakes the three, drives right of the lane, hands off to Stockwell, cutting down the lane. He misses the layup. He had it. Stockwell, the ball just wouldn't bounce in the basket. The offense will take that shot any day. Dixon with the rebound, and Wayne Luke brings it up. Luke stolen in the passing lane by Stockwell on the pass. Stockwell takes it in. The layup is good. Substitutions. Brian Menard is in for Stockwell, who will take a breather. His first for the second half. Dormer is replaced by Janelle. 10-21 to go. It's anybody's ball game. It's been an exciting one here at Lemoyne. 54 all. The team will bring it up on Luke. We have a near capacity crowd here. Nice to see. And it's a good, loud, rowdy crowd. The Dolphins here. The team leaders are here. Doing a great job. This is what it's all about. Playoff basketball. A team, father on the left side. Tomzik jump pass to Langro on the baseline. He's fouled, no call, missed the layup, and the rebound to Paul. Obvious foul by Albany, but no whistle. Three by Janelle, off the rim. Rebound tracked down by uh, out of Ingram. He tried to just shield it as a foul. And he did. Dixon couldn't get to the ball. Four for four in the game for us. Two for two from three. Dolphins are going to have to hit in his face. Ten points, three rebounds. Three assists, and he is credit for a block shot. Yep, he got Langrill on that drive in the first half. 54 all, 9.50 to go. Second half, Dolphins are going to have to put together a run here. Someone's got to put Dorn on the sleeve. <laughs> oh, my. A team trying to use Tomzik as a pick, but Tomzik's not really setting up for him. Now he does. Around the perimeter, and off to Menard. Jumper from 16. Good. That's a big basket for the sophomore. Summer, he's going to have to learn how to take one step back because he shoots right on the line. That's his shot. He should get the extra point. Shot missed by uh, Luke. And he's called for a charge. A traveling after he bumped into Tomzik. Looked like Tomzik might have been called for the foul. Tomzik first man to head right back down court. Tomzik held his foul. Didn't move his feet at all. Good defense by JT. That time Luke flashed in the lane. Put up a wild shot. He was lucky that it was kept alive by Paul. That was a real ill advised offensive move by Luke. He does not get much play. I'm surprised we're seeing him this long. Normally, Neary is in off the bench. He hasn't taken off the runners. 56 54, the one by two. Three by Stockwell, top of the key. Good! 22 for Stockwell. It's already his best game against Albany this year. Keith Moyer spelling uh, Robert Keane on the team on the bench, pounding the floor with his hands. The one by five, 59 54, their biggest second half lead. Holds it overhead, finds Janelle, the top of the key, Menard on him. Often still in the two threes on. 
Janelle. His pass is tipped away by Stockton. Another heady steal by the senior. And Menard brings it up into the front court. 8.32 to go. Dolphins by five. And they got to keep working for good shots. Tomzik in the high post. To Keith Moyer, the backup point guard. Sophomore on a central square is into the game. Stockwell again, top of the key. Drives up to the lane. Is called. Uh, they're going to call a foul on his drive. I thought they might have called him for a walk. David Halloran is into the game? Oh, wow. He's he not anymore. Just for a couple of seconds, and he's back on the bench. He's a 6'5 junior out of Gloversville down the throughway. Yeah, he went into the game, put a body on top. It was really the call taken out of the game. Five-second violation on Dan Tours, who could not get a pass away. That's about Drew's sixth turnover today. It doesn't happen very often when the Dolphins get called for one of those five-second calls, but Drew is just bottled up. By the way, the starters are back on the floor for Albany as the substitutions when... Uh, when Dixon and Halloran went back on the eye, uh, Paul is still in for Albany, along with Duncan, Dorman, McGoldrick, and Brown. Here's still on the ball, but he's called for a foul. But it's a good foul. He's a great job reaching him to tip the ball away. I'm surprised they called it. 59-54 Lemoyne with 7.57 to go, first half. First game of the NECC tournament. One other game going on today. It's the 4-5 game. This is the 3-6 game. 4-5 game, Southern Connecticut hosting Sacred Heart. The winner of that game will play number one seed, Franklin Pierce. Behind the back pass, McGoldrick to Janelle. His shot is no good off the glass and foul call. And Janelle with a wild, out of control shot. Tough call against Keith Moyer because he had no chance of making that forced on the contact. And that's a whistle that should not have been blown. Brian Menard laughing hysterically on the floor at the, at the call. Brian Menard then stepped the ball. And Moyer will be replaced by a team. That's the first foul on Moyer and the fifth on Lemoyne. Four on Albany here, and it'll be foul shots for Janelle. His first trip to the line today on the season, 78%. Shot is good. And now with the, uh, the big guys back in for Albany, Lemoyne's going to have to... Uh, Continue to look for some high percentage shots. Second shot good by Janelle. Now the start is in for the Dolphins as well. Eight points for the starting shooting guard. And Lemoy pressured on the inbound, but a team will bring it up as Albany retreats. 59-56 Lemoyne, 744 to go. Lemoyne wins this game. They move on to the conference semifinals in New Hampshire against New Hampshire College at Franklin Pierce. If that's not too confusing. Neutral site game. Lemoyne is one and one with the New Hampshire College Pen in this season. On the right side behind the arc, it's Minard. Stockwell in the corner. Shot clock down to 10. Lemoyne's got to look for a good shot here. The team tries to penetrate. Stockwell throws a pass behind his back and out of bounds. Intended for Brian Minard, who was cutting up for it. Stockwell went toward the basket. I don't think Minard expected the pass because the shot clock was down so low. Seems like every time Lemoyne builds a five or seven point lead in this game, they start making stupid turnovers. No. Unforced errors, and it brings gives Albany the chance to come back and uh, get back in the game. We'll get a turnover count for you in just a moment. McGoldrick, top of the key. Drew's defending, kind of out of position. McGoldrick doesn't really play down low that often for a big man. Dormer behind the arc. Duncan around the uh, pick. Here's Charles Paul. Shot off glass and in from the top of the line. He did not fall glass on that one. I don't think he did. Ten points for Charles Paul off the bench. He's only scored six against Lemoyne all year long before that in two meetings. Stockwell, top of the key, doesn't take three. Lemoyne by only one now, 59-58. Lemoyne with 11 turnovers, Alderman with 15. So Lemoyne doing a good job forcing some errors, but they're creating too many of their own as well. Stockwell won't take three. Tomzik is knocked down on his butt, no claw away from the ball. Drew's down low, his shot is blocked by Pizza 
is at, located at 311 West Fayette Street in the heart of Armory Square in downtown Syracuse. Congratulations to Stockwell, his first license slam in his four years here on the Heights. Timeout by Lemoyne. With the Dolphins leading 61-60, 5.36 to go. You're listening to Lemoyne College Basketball on AM 1260, WNDR, Dolphins Country. That's the latest team, Tom Sick, Drews, and Menard, the starting five for Lemoyne. Renner, McGoldrick, Janelle, Duncan, and former for Albany. So in the last 5.36, I believe, unless there are foul outs, we're going to have the starters on the floor. And it's a one-point game. This is anyone's ball game. Robertine. Dribbles up, uses a pick by Thompson on the left side. Robertine setting up a play with 15 on the shot clock. Again, works around a Thompson pick to the right side, but Dormer picks him up. Pass to Menard. Menard left of the lane, kicks it back out to Stockwell. Stockwell down the lane, hands off to Tomzik. Foul line jumper. Long bounces up on the rim and off, and a foul over the back on Albany. That's a break for the moment of bailout. A big break because it's the fourth and Tom and Goldberg who pushed the end rules underneath the basket. They anticipated the bounce. You know that bounce? It took a high bounce off the back rim on Tomzik's shot. It went high up, and because it was up there for so long, everybody mistimed the jump. Inbounds to Tomzik. Stockwell on the left side, top of the key, launches a three-pointer. It's going to be short, an air ball out of bounds. He forced that one. He wasn't really set with his feet. We're under five minutes, and Albany can take a lead. Falling backward just a little bit, enough to throw it out there. Turn it into an air ball. Dolphins look a little tired right now. 61-60 Lemoyne. Janelle on the right side. Feeds Brenner back out to McGoldrick, top of the key. Wants to take the three, but won't. Brenner, top of the key again. Buys Dormer on the left side. Dolphins step up the defense. McGoldrick fakes the three, moves to the foul line, looks for a cutter right side. Duncan won't take the three, moves in on Stockwell. Shot is up and no good. He finally misses one. A team the rebound. Dolphins need a score here. Stockwell to a team. Right side, Dan Drews puts it on the floor. Was fouled, no call. The rebound tipped up. Long pass up ahead to McGoldrick. He fakes one man up. Has a layup and Albany has a lead. Second half, Dolphins trail 62 to 61. This is not the way the script was supposed to be uh, written. National Fire Adjustment Company Incorporated is licensed by New York State to represent policyholders in insurance recoveries. Call Dennis at 437-7400 and tell him you heard about it. Have led by as many as five in the second half, led by as many as seven in the first half, are now trailing by one, 62 to 61, and it's crunch time, 404 to go. Don, just like the first time these two teams met here at the Hennigar Athletic Center. Lemoyne was playing uh, back and forth up until about three minutes to go. Then they kept they kept Albany scoreless the last 3:40 of the game. That's right. Dolphin defense stepped up at the end of that game, but they don't want to be in that position if they can help it. Some substitutions for Lemoyne. Dolphins getting tired. Langro in the game. Langro feeds Drews down low. Has a layup. And it goes in. It almost ran out. Langro with the nice feed. 19 for Drews. Dolphins up one. 63-62. Ingram also in the game. because some of the team, some of the players were getting a little bit winded. Former rolls to the hole, has a layup off glass. He misses it long, and the rebound is tipped back up and in by Dixon. No one boxed him out, and again, the Dolphins getting killed on the defensive glass. 64-63, Albany with 3.19 to go. Langwell to the left side, and Ingram. Ingram finds Stockwell, top of the key, wide open for three. Long rebound, Ingram in the lane. Back out to Stockwell. Will he take another one? No, he lobs it down low to Langwell. Fakes. The shot is no good. What's the call? A foul on the floor before the shot. It's a good time for that first. It's too bad he didn't throw that shot up with that free throw right now. 64-63, and Langro will have a couple of big free throws with 3.08 to go. On the season, 71%. He's 2 of 2 today. Fans of the snow and cold has gotten to be too much for you to take this winter. Travel Agents International and Northwest World Vacations have a Florida getaway deal that'll warm you up. We'll tell you about it in just a moment. Forgot, it's not foul shots. No, not one will be Sixth on Albany in the half. 3.04 to go. Langro is bottled up in the corner. Now gets it out to a team. A team penetrates, kicks it back out to Stockwell. Ingram top of the key. 23 on the shot clock. We're under three minutes. Dolphins down one. 
Stockwell to Langrell to the left side now. A three by a team off the rim. Tipped up. Langrell or Ingram is there. He gets fouled. Puts the shot up off the rim though. Pippen Lang Ingram will go to the line for a pair of free throws. And it's the fourth foul on Ingram. Florida packages start at just $263 per person at Travel Agents International, including airfare and 70 car rental. You can't beat that. Get away today. Call Travel Agents International for all the toasty details, 487-2144. Offices conveniently located in DeWitt, Fairmount, and Liverpool. Shot is up and good by Ingram. Lemoyne is not missed from the line today. They are a perfect 7 of 7. Travel Agents International, give them a call at 487-2144. We're tied at 64. Ingram shot for the lead. Good. Ingram's only two points off the bench. Lemoyne's up 65-64 with 2.43 to go in the ballgame. What a ballgame here at the Lindy Rock Brothers Center. Timeout by Albany will take a timeout as well. 2.37 to go. Lemoyne 65, Albany 64. You're listening to Lemoyne College Basketball on 8. delicious mouth-watering pizzas located at 311 West Bayette Street in the heart of Armory Square. You can stop by for a relaxing, affordable lunch or dinner or for just a slice with your friends. Slices is open late until late night weekdays at 3 a.m. Friday and Saturday nights. Not just a pizza shop, Slices is part of the downtown Syracuse experience, so enjoy a slice of life at Slices Pizza, a meal for your money, Armory Square, downtown. And who's the replacement? It's Charles Paul, predictably the tallest player on the bench. Dan Drews to the line, trying to complete a three-point play that would give Lemoyne a two-point lead with 2.05 to go. He is a perfect four of four from the line today. Shot is up. It's good. Five of five for Drews, who has 22 points. He had a career-high 27 against Albany last meeting earlier this month. And Dan Drews has now hit 34 of his last 39 foul shots. And the Dodgers need to go to work on the goal to try to get him out of the game. He shoots from inside the arc and rattles in. And that's why they got to get him out of the game. He's a good offensive weapon. Knotted up at 68. A team passes to Drew. Now reverse it to the left side and Ingram. Ingram to Stockwell, top of the key. Three-pointer partially blocked, and Duncan comes down with it. Great block that time by Paul. A little bit of a lazy three-point shot by Stockwell. Albany read it very well. Now we're 90 seconds away from the final buzzer. And we're tied up at 68. Timeout Albany with 127 to go. You're listening to Lamar College Basketball on AM 1260 WNDR, Dolphins Country. Seconds left, tied at 68. A 
17 at the top of the key. Find Stockwell on the left side. Stockwell trying to uh, get Langro open. Langro bounced down low to Drews, but it's picked off by Paul and Janelle. Fifteen on the shot clock, twenty-one on the game clock. Duncan just holding near center court. Ten on the shot clock. Nine, eight, seven. He's still passing around the front here. Left side, Janelle for three. Off the rim, rebound, Drews had it. It blocked his hands out of bounds. It's going to be open. He blown with five seconds to go. Dan Drews was hammered over the back by two players. No call. Country. Shout. If we lose this game, this is the official. Goblins back to the floor with Drew, Stockwell, Langro, Thompson, and the team. Thorne is going to inbound for Albany. Thorne's going to have to play good interior defense here. Five seconds to go, tied up at 68. Thorner bounces it in to McGoldrick. Fade away shot. Short. It goes out of bounds with one second to go. Albany will have possession for one last shot at putting a big upset on Lamar. No timeouts for Albany. Dormer to throw in bounds. Lobs it in. It's knocked away at the buzzer. We're going to overtime. 68 all. Wow, what a game. We're going to take a timeout, fans, when we come back. Overtime action from the height. 68 even. Tomzik and a team for Lemoyne. Dormer, Paul, McGoldrick, Janelle, and Duncan for Albany as we have an opening or a jump ball. Five minutes to play in overtime, 68 all. Lemoyne has five fouls, eight on Albany. And Lemoyne, a very hot free throw shooting club, have not missed from the floor tonight or from the line tonight, will uh, be in the advantage. Every foul from here on out in overtime, Lemoyne gets foul shot. Paul will jump center against Tomzik. It's finally up, and won by Duncan and Albany. And that's an over the back, over, over and back violation. Jan uh, the ball was tipped from Paul out to Janelle near half court. He was already established in the front court, threw back to uh, Duncan, or to Janelle rather, and he was in the back court. That's a violation, so Lemoyne gets it. Tied at 68, 4.57 to go in overtime. Now the Dolphins here with the second line, hoping to do something in overtime. And one good thing about overtime, it has more time for McGoldrick to receive his fifth foul. And for the first time this year, Langro is in the game with, with Drews and Tomzik. Dolphins going good. Langro down the lane, his shot is no good but a foul. A nice hard drive by the New Zealand freshman. And he'll get foul shots. He is two of two from the line already tonight. Third foul on Rich Brenner has already fouled out the 6'7 sophomore starting center. He had eight points when he was disqualified. And now uh, the Dolphins will be working down low, probably on McGoldrick. He has four fouls. The great to get McGoldrick out of the game so the Dolphins don't have to worry about his offense. First shot by Lango. Good. And Dave Lango, you'll remember in the last meeting between these two clubs, Albany had possession in a tie game. And uh, Langro got a big steal, went down the lane and got fouled, hit two, one out of two free throws. Here he hits both free throws. Right, Lemoyne up two now in overtime. 70 to 68, 437 to go. Janelle, hop, skip, dribble. Right side, here's a pass stolen by the Dolphins. It's now loose on the floor. Timeout call by Albany. That's a good call. They managed to get the ball away from Stockwell. Stockwell had the initial steal, and then he was tied up, and writhing on the ground was Dormer. They didn't call it travel. They gave him credit for a timeout, so 
looked like he called it right away. So a smart play by Jarmer as he gets Albany down to two timeouts. We'll keep it here. 4.29 to go in overtime. It'll be Albany ball, 70-68 to Lemoyne. Year after year, Lemoyne College is nationally recognized for its academic quality and affordable cost. Lemoyne Center for Continuous Learning knows adult students have jobs, families, and other commitments, and that's why Lemoyne offers courses to fit your schedule and a trained staff to sit down with you and talk about your academic, career, and professional needs. Call Lemoyne College's Center for Continuous Learning at 445-4141. Register at Lemoyne because education never ends. Take time to learn part-time, 445-4141. Again, we'll remind you, if Lemoyne wins this game, we'll be on the air Friday at 5.30 from the uh, semifinal site at Franklin Pierce College. Lemoyne against New Hampshire College, the two-seed versus three-seed, and we'll be on WMCR 106.3. Mark it down. The rest of the playoffs and postseason for Lemoyne. Dormer to throw inbounds, finds Charles Paul, 20 seconds on the shot clock, 4.26 to go in overtime. Lemoyne by a basket, 70 to 68. Paul plays catch with Janelle. Janelle at the top of the key. He missed the three that would have given Albany an upset win or a chance for one. McGoldrick, foul line extended right to Janelle. Three pointer. Oh, it's good by that by Duncan. <laughs> Duncan with 21 points, and now Albany with a one-point lead. 71-70, four minutes to go in overtime. Because I think a great move by Steve Hicks to keep Langle in the game because it puts a bigger body on Duncan. That time, though, he got screened off of the play. A team hooks a pass down low to Drews. He fakes. Triple team back out to a team. Three-pointer up. Off the rim. Rebound. Controlled by McGoldrick, and a foul over the back on Stockwell. Both officials had their arms straight up in the air. To the near side, Kevin Woodcock held up two fingers, saw the toe on the line. Remember, he wiped off a three-point shot by one of the uh, Albany players early in the game as well. The officials helping each other out. Well, one official had both arms up. So Albany with the ball on a one-point lead, 71-70. Dolphins have to do it with defense again, and they do it. Actually, Duncan took his eye off the pass and went right through his fingertips, and there is Lemoyne to pick it off. The steal for a team. I'll take the steal anyway. Drews to the team, and the team just dribbles around near center court. 3.14 to go, 20 on the shot clock in overtime. Dolphins down one, 71-70. And a foul down low. That'll be foul shots for Dave Langrell as he was held by Dormer. And that's number four on Dormer. For Albany, they don't want to go to position with more than no overtime. And now the foul the Dolphins, they have two starters in the game, Dormer and McGoldy, by four fouls apiece. Tenth foul on Albany, it'll be two shots for Langrell, six only on Lemoyne. Dave Langrell, a perfect 4 of 4 from the line tonight, has six points. Shot is up, and good. Dave Langrell doing it at the line, just 71% coming in, which is good, but not great, and he's been perfect tonight. He bounces deliberately, bends, and shoots. It's good. Yep, 13 of 13. Yep, 13 of 13 is right. Langle with eight points, and he has six of six. Dolphins up one, 72-71. Three minutes to play in overtime. What a game. McGoldrick lobs down low to Dormer. Dormer whips a pass inside, and it's picked up. Charles Paul is a horrendous free throw shooter, 46%. Second foul on Langrell. No Dolphins in this game have three fouls. And it's only the one and one, too, because it's the seventh foul on Lemoyne. I'll tell you, the whistles have not gone Lemoyne's way today. It's been a strange There have been some very obvious fouls on Albany not called, and some tricky ticky ones like that that are called on Lemoyne. Charles Paul put one under the one and one. It's good, nothing but net. And Langrell was in the lane early, so he would have gotten a second shot. But looking at his free throw. We're tied at 72, under three minutes to go in the first overtime. Second shot is up. It's good. Beautiful free throw by Paul. You'd never know he was 46%. 12 points for Paul off the bench. Lemoyne down one again. 73, 72. Timeout by Scott Hicks. And I can see sweat from the back of his shirt. He is, he is having to work for his paycheck today. 2.51 to go. We'll keep it here. Lemoyne trail 73, 72, and they cannot shake this very pesky Albany team. Now, two good free throws by Paul underneath, so it turns into a bad foul by Langrill. It was a good shot at the steal in the lane. Golf is trying to step up the defense, but it's difficult against this team, which is so well coached, to run their offensive plays to precision. 
We want to remind you when we finally do this win to get win number 22, and then they'd have a 50-50 shot even if they lose at New Hampshire College. And if you're going to do it against any team, this is the team to do it against. Albany, a big team. A team works it up back to his defender. The freshman back in the game, Dwayne Roof. Stockwell, top of the key, works left of the arc, gets it to Tomzik. Shot clock to 16. Tomzik looking for someone down low instead has to whip it back out to a team. The more looks confused on offense. The team drives left of the lane, pull up jumper. It rolls off the rim a little bit and call there for the rebound. Dolphins down one with 222 to go. I don't think that jumper by a team was a shot hit coach Scott Hicks wanted. Well, it was good defense. It was a tough shot by a team that ended up short. The Dolphins want to get Stockwell open, but we haven't heard from Stockwell here in a long time. Janelle just dribbling near center court. It's to Albany's uh, advantage for the fewest possessions possible here when they have the lead and in foul trouble. Now they have a few seconds left on the shot clock. Luke drives, pass nearly tipped away by Stockwell. Right side, Duncan off balance shot, in traffic, off the mark. Stockwell high for the rebound. Dolphins with 147 to go, trail by one in overtime. A team near the near sideline, hearing directly from head coach Scott Hicks. Right side, Tomzik. In the corner to Stockwell. Feeds Drews down low, but he threw it in the crowd. Drews is there, has the rebound, puts it up in the Lemoyne's up one, 74, 73, 115 to go. The pass was a really weak one by Stockwell. He threw in the middle of a crowd, but it just laid there at Drew's feet. Charles Plot a shot blocked. Stockwell inside half court calls timeout with 101 left in overtime. And boy, the freshman coming through with a huge defensive play on one of the best shot blockers in the league, Charles Paul. He got, uh, he got himself blocked. And Dan Drews was probably the uh, most opportunistic basket of his career. The pass kind of went through his hands and through his legs and sat in the paint. He looked left, right, and down, and there was the ball. Nobody saw it. And he had it up and put it in. He was able to put it in because where the ball was, his back was to his only defender. The old play in football were the between the shot clock and the game clock, and now it's even, so it must be caught right at the half second when they're both exactly the same. Dolphins have to play some great defense here. Drews had that pass down low. It looked like he had a step to put up a layup, but Charles Paul with a vicious block shot 
right to Tomzik. Tomzik picked it up, but couldn't control the ball. He bobbled it, and it was picked up on the baseline by Duncan. It's uh, Ball's fifth block of the game. Very important for the Dolphins to pre prevent an easy shot here. Come away with the ball because with uh, 10 fouls coming, the shot clock is at 22. At this point, Albany's only recourse would to be, be the foul the Dolphins. Lemoyne has missed a free throw in this game. Right. And they're in the 10 foul bonus. Lemoyne has only 7 fouls against it. That counts the second half and this overtime. 22 seconds to go. In the first overtime, LeMoyne's only up one, 74-73. If they win this game, it will be despite a host of turnovers. A lot of turnovers and some great shooting by Albany. Absolutely outstanding shooting by Albany, especially in the second half when they were well over 60%. Some big minutes by Albany. Five blocks back in this game, and they all have an opportunity. It's in the first game like this, every block shot is opportunity. No one's led by more than seven in this game. Last time these two teams met, no one led by more than five. LeMoyne's never lost to Albany, at least in league play. Goldrick gets the inbounds. 20 on the game clock. Lemoyne by one. 74 73. Duncan dribbles on Ingram. That's about a five inch height advantage for Albany. McGoldrick is fouled by Jules on the right side. With 12 seconds left, and McGoldrick, a good free throw shooter, will go to the line for the one and one. And he can give Albany all the hands on the offensive second to work with him. But he makes both free throws. Dan Drew's a little bit tired, reaching in that time, called for his second foul. That's great that uh, Drews has only been called with two, the starting power forward. And the Goldrick will go to the line on the season, 72%, but first a timeout by head coach Scott Hicks. An interesting timeout. They're going to give uh, the Goldrick a chance to rest a little bit. In a game like this one, you're very tired. You let adrenaline go. Everyone sometimes it's dangerous to rest because the adrenaline leaves your body and your free throw ends up short. The Dolphins have to do a good job off the offensive boards if it does miss a shot because Paul's going to be in the game here and could easily tip the ball and miss into the basket. Give credit to the Albany team for staying close. The sixth seed was backed into the playoffs by Lowell losing the last day of the season. But they've come in here playing as if everything relies on this game, and it does. If they want to keep playing, they've got to win. And for the Dolphins, in, in effect, that's also the case. Coming in at 21 and 5, really on the bubble for an NCAA tournament bid for the first time since 1988. The head coach Scott Hicks was a senior back when he was lacing up the sneakers. Well, this could be the last 12 seconds of basketball for Dan Hughes and Adam Stockwell. You can't say that about anyone on the Albany team. No, they have no seniors. Foul shots for Tom McGoldrick. With 12 seconds to go in the first overtime, Lemoyne 74 and Albany 73. Seconds left, Lemoyne up one. It's up. It's no good, but tipped up to a team. A team just dribbles around. Find Stockwell on the right side. Stockwell is fouled with four seconds to go. And Adam Stockwell with a big grin. He's one of the best free throw shooters in the country. for the first shot. Good! Adam Stockwell with a game-high 25 points and his first points 
in about eight minutes of game action. And now Lemoyne sends all of its other four players into the backcourt. Lemoyne by two, four seconds to go in overtime. Stockwell misses, don't want to give Albany an easy shot. Shot is up. It's good. Janelle, half court he. It's off the glass, no good. Lemoyne wins in overtime and will advance to the conference semifinal. 76-73, high fives and hugs and money in center court. Lemoyne escapes with a very scary three-point win in overtime. Now the fans start jumping on the court and head into the huddle. What a game. 76-73, Lemoyne wins it in overtime. Did not lose this game. They played about as valiantly as they could. But Lemoyne just came up with the key plays in the last few seconds of overtime to pull out the win, 76-73. Wow, what a game. We're going to step aside when we come back. The Brooklyn Pickle postgame show. We'll speak with our Wegman star of the game. We'll also talk with our Brooklyn Pickle sub of the game. And head coach Scott Hicks will recap it all if he has any energy left. Lemoyne wins it in overtime, 76-73, advancing to the conference semifinals Friday at 5.30. We'll be on the air with you at 5.15 from Franklin Pierce College against New Hampshire College. Lemoyne against the Penman as uh, the Dolphins will try to get to the championship game and assure themselves of an NCAA tournament bid. We'll remind you fans, we'll be on the air at 106.3 FM WMCR. So from here on out, after tonight's game,